Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy, fresh back from vacation and working in the UP this weekend, ready to hit some videos. So today uh, for Trig on Tuesday, what we're going to do is some practical mathematics. The first few weeks, we kind of looked at some of the basics of Trig. Today, we're going to put it into practice. Specifically, we're going to talk about the mathematics of navigation on the Earth. And specifically, we're going to talk about this the marine sextant. So let's cue up the music and get going. Now to start off with our discussion of the marine sextant, let's look at basically how a sextant works. Many of us are familiar with a periscope. So for example, if we have a star that comes back and hits a mirror, then bounces down to another mirror, and it's reflected into a little telescope or an eyepiece, and we can see that star. So the path of light will kind of go like this. But this second mirror is not fully silvered. Now there are two basic styles that you'll run into. One style has half of the mirror silvered and the other clear. The type that I have on my sextant is a partially silvered mirror, but it's partially silvered all over. So it's very much like a reflective window that you look at at night. You can see what's going on in the room, but if you shine a flashlight at that window, part of it will reflect back to your eye. That's basically the type of mirror that I have. Now let's go ahead and see how this looks on an actual sextant. Now, for those of you that are a little anal retentive about this, this is a Davis Mark 25 marine sextant. This is certified for use in navigation of our ships. Now, here is the top mirror, and here is the bottom mirror. Now, as you can see, that top mirror is fully silvered, the bottom mirror has some silvering on it, but you can see through it. You see the telescope in the back? And you also see the telescope reflected off of this mirror up to the top mirror. Now that's the situation when this is set for zero degrees. You have two parallel lines. Now, here's the way a sextant works. This mirror is attached to the body of the sextant. This is called the arch. This is the body of the sextant. This mirror is attached to an armature that can move. And as you can see, you just move it like that. Now, what happens with this? Say you're looking at the horizon of the ocean through the telescope and through this window on this partially silvered mirror. If you want to look at an object that's up in the sky, what you have to do is you have to bring this arm up until that object is reflected through this mirror, down to this mirror, and then back to your telescope. Let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so now let's look at this. We have a star up here, be it the sun, be it Polaris, whatever you want. And we have the horizon of the ocean here. By tilting, this periscope back, what we can do is we can take light from this star, reflect it off of this mirror, have it hit this mirror, and have it reflected through the eyepiece. Now when this is set up correctly, what we will do is we will see the ocean. And then we will see the star right on the horizon. That means we have this angle correct. So then to get our reading, what we do is we simply read off the angle on the sextant. Well, it's a couple of days after I made this video and I went back and looked at it and I felt that this section was a little bit unclear. I also noticed that I'd mismarked some of the angles. So I wanted to come back and re-record it. How does the sextant work and what is the geometry? Well, let's go over it real quick. Now here we are on the surface of the earth and we'll make this the equator. Now, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to 
put the sun out at the equinox, which we see in March and September, and it is directly over the equator. So the geographic position of the sun will be on the equator. So what's our latitude up here? Well, the way to find that latitude is to look at that angle right there. That angle will tell us what our latitude is. So if we're, that angle is 45 degrees, we're at 45 degrees north. Now let's go ahead and see how the sextant determines that angle. Now there's a couple of things that I want to go over real quick. One is a basic geometric property, and that is that if you have two parallel lines, and you draw a third line between them like that, this angle is the same thing as that angle right there. Those angles are said to be congruent. Now, looking at that, you can also draw two parallel lines, and you can draw a single line perpendicular between them. So this is a 90 degree angle here and here. Now, this angle equals that angle. But more importantly, if you draw two more parallel lines, if these two lines are parallel to each other, that angle will be the same as that angle. And what's more, that angle will be the same as that angle. Now that's the principle that a sextant uses. So let's go ahead and have a look and see how the sextant actually works. So here we are with our sextant, and we're going to draw a couple of lines. The first one is a tangent line to the surface of the Earth, and it's right like that. Perpendicular to it is an extension of the radius of the Earth that goes through our feet. So this direction is called our zenith. And standing on the Earth, that would be directly over our heads. Now, when we look at a sextant, what we're trying to do is we're trying to measure an angle between this horizontal line and the sun. Because the sun is so far distant, it light, because the sun is so far distant, its light arrives in parallel, and that is a basic premise of celestial navigation, that light from distant objects arrives at Earth in parallel. This could be the sun, it could be the stars, it could even be the moon. Now what that means is that the rays of the sun coming to the equator are coming from that direction, from the zenith. The rays of the sun hitting our sextant will be parallel to the rays of the sun at the equator. Now here's the reason I drew those two angles, and I'll go ahead and put them back up here so that you can rem remember them. Okay? So that angle equals that angle, and that angle equals that angle. That's just to remind you. So if we take this line right here, which is a tangent line at our feet to a single point on the surface of the Earth, we can also draw that same tangent line right here, and these two lines are parallel to each other. Now, what does the sextant actually measure? The sextant measures the angle between the center of the celestial body, in this case the sun, and the horizon. So it measures this angle right here. So where's that angle down here? Well, it's right here. These are exactly the same angle. Now, this is a 90 degree angle to our horizontal line. So what is this angle right here? Well, it's 90 degrees minus HS, which is the angle we measure from our sextant. If we subtract that from 90, we get that angle right there. And that would be that angle right there. That determines our latitude. Now there's one more thing that we need to understand about the measurement of latitude. With our sextant, we measure the distance, the angle, between a celestial body like the sun and the horizon. What if the sun's not directly over the equator? What if it's down here at 23 and a half degrees south latitude, which is where it would be at the December solstice? So, that would be the new geographic position of the sun. So what angle are we going to measure with our sextant? Well, that is the line to the sun. So what we're going to measure 
is that angle right there. All right, we want this angle. Well, that angle is called the declination of the sun because the sun is below the equator. And in this case, at the December solstice, it would be negative 23.5. So we're going to measure this distance, and we're going to subtract it from 90. And that will give us a number that is larger than our latitude. Why? Because we have to subtract the declination. So in other words, if we were at 40 degrees north latitude, when we found our zenith angle, it wouldn't be 40 degrees. It would be 63 and a half degrees. We would have to subtract the 23 and a half degree declination. Likewise, if the sun is up here in June, and that's the new GP of the sun, which is plus 23.5 degrees, what would we measure here? Well, our zenith angle would be 40 degrees minus 23 and a half. So that would be 16 and a half degrees. We'd have to add to that 16 and a half degrees the declination, 23 and a half degrees, and we would come up with 40. If the sun is at the equator, zenith angle equals latitude. If the sun is closer to us than the equator, we're going to read this angle right here. We have to add to it the declination angle to get our latitude. So it would be zenith angle plus declination equals latitude. If the zenith angle was here and the sun was down here, we would take, we're going to measure this entire angle with our sextant. So we have to take zenith angle minus declination equals latitude. Does that make some sense? So the first thing that you have to say is, well, what hemisphere am I in? Second, is the sun between me and the equator? Is it on the equator? Or is it on the other side of the equator? And for that, you look up the declination of the sun in the Naval Almanac, and it'll tell you what it is every hour of every day of the year. So for example, when I was in Florida, the sun was north of the equator. My zenith angle that I measured was about 15 degrees. The declination was also about 15 degrees. So you add them together and you found that my latitude was approximately 30 degrees. Now here's an interesting situation that I'm going to let you try and figure out. What if instead of being up here, we're down here, and the sun is further away from us than the equator? We'll know this declination right here from the Naval Almanac. What are we going to measure when we get out our sextant? Well, first of all, that will be our new zenith, and we will measure that angle right there. So what is our true latitude? Well, in that case, it's declination minus our zenith angle equals our latitude. Pretty cool, huh? Let's go on to a couple other things. Okay, so that's probably enough for this episode. In our next episode, we're going to talk about a couple of things. How do we look at errors in the sextant? And this is something that is very important for people that are looking at visual, um, you know, optical things for horizons and such. What kind of corrections do we have to put in? Well, I hope that this is something that you enjoy. It's something that I like. And it's of interest to me, and I think it may be of interest to some people out there, which is why I'm going to go ahead and do this short series for Trigon Tuesday. So until then, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe, and I'll see you next week.